bring that book that we talked about <gasps> oh, today? Yes, thanks for reminding me. Oh, I'm so oh, excited. Yeah. Mm. I love this book, friends. Oh. Oh, wonderful. This is exactly the book I was hoping for. This is written by a good friend of mine named Lisa Wimberger, and its title is... The Monster Under Your Bed is Just a Story in Your Head. Mm -hmm. Peanut gets ready for bed. She brushes her teeth, gets into her snuggly pajamas, and climbs into her warm bed. All is well. But then, Peanut does something she seems to do a lot lately. She makes a little visit to the library in her mind. She goes here often to look through memories and stories that live there. She likes to look for the perfect bedtime story to tell herself. Strangely, the library is a very big place inside her child-sized head. It's amazing how so many memories and stories can fit inside. She's greeted by the librarian, Mr. Hippocampus, who is always there to help her retrieve her bedtime story. Peanut calls him Mr. Hippo, which sounds like it's short for hippopotamus. But what's really strange is that he doesn't look like a hippopotamus at all. Rather, he looks like a seahorse. Mr. Hippo greets Peanut in the usual way, with a big warm smile and a hearty, Welcome to the library of your stories. Which story would you like to read today? Mr. Hippo is so helpful. Anytime Peanut wanted to remember something, he's always there helping. Would you like the story of the time you got a big hug from your mother? Or would you prefer the story of the time when you ate so much yummy food your belly made you happy? Asks Mr. Hippo. Even though Peanut really loves the stories that make her feel warm and fuzzy, it seems that before she knows it, she asks for a very different sort of story, the one about the big, scary monster that lives under her bed. Now, Peanut knows that a big monster could never fit under her bed, and even though her parents tell her many times that it isn't real, she spends a lot of time feeling scared of this story anyway. The more she feels scared of it and thinks about it, the more important Mr. Hippo thinks it is. Wanting to be a helpful librarian, Mr. Hippo keeps this important story handy and waiting for Peanut any time she wants to visit the library. Mr. Hippo simply wants to do a good job, giving Peanut the story she asks for most. With the familiar but made-up monster story in hand, Peanut heads for the door where she encounters her old friend, Miss Amy. Sure for Miss Amygdala, which Peanut could never pronounce correctly. Miss Amy looks strangely like a plump almond. These library folks sure look peculiar. Miss Amy opens the door for her and asks, Which story did you get today, Peanut? Peanut holds up the monster under the bed story. Oh, that one comes with all sorts of things to make it more interesting. Wait here, I'll get them for you. Miss Amy dashes away and quickly returns with a bag of things. She pulls out a coat that looks way too small, and she stuffs Peanut into it anyway. When she buttons it too tightly, Peanut can't breathe so well. Her arms feel tense and frozen in very snug sleeves. This doesn't feel very good. And then Miss Amy takes out a too small hat and jams Peanut's head into it. It feels too tight and gives her a headache. Yuck, this doesn't feel good at all. But just when she thinks she can leave to read her story, Miss Amy takes out one more item, a necklace. She places it on Peanut's neck, but it too is very small, and pinches a little bit so that Peanut can't swallow well. Miss Amy says, now you are ready to read the story and feel all of the feelings that make this monster story seem real. Peanut feels tight, stuck, unable to breathe easily or swallow with a terrible headache. Yes, Peanut feels stress and fear, and this seems very familiar when she thinks about each time she reads this very same story. Even though Miss Amy helps her feel this way, she's not a mean person. She's just doing her job to make the story seem more real. But she gives Peanut some great advice before she leaves. Peanut, remember that once you stop reading this story, I'll take back all of the items, and you can go back to feeling calm, breathing deeply, and thinking clearly, like the way you feel when you aren't feeling fear. When will that be? Whenever you are ready to read a different story. Peanut wonders why she keeps reading the scary story instead of some of the ones that make her feel good. And precisely when she thinks this, Miss Amy adds, Sometimes the scary stories are easier to retrieve because they come with strong feelings, and strong feeling stories are filed up front in the library, so Mr. Hippo doesn't have to go too far to get them for you. Peanut stops for a moment and asks, 
What if I don't want to read this story anymore, but it's up front? How do I get a different story to be filed up front so Mr. Hippo gets that one easily? Miss Amy smiles her biggest, warmest smile. That's a great question, and one of life's most precious secrets. Do you think you are ready to learn such a precious secret? With all her heart, Peanut nods yes. Miss Amy steps in closer, kneels down, and takes Peanut's hand. Listen carefully. You have read this particular story many times. The more you do anything, the easier it is for you to do that thing. So getting this story and feeling scared is now easy for you. That's exactly what happens when you practice being scared. So now you have to practice feeling safe, warm, and cozy. You have to choose a different story and tell it to yourself many times for it to be practiced enough to be easy. You have to stop all throughout the warm story and ask, what types of things can your body feel during this story? Let's try that together. When you think of the story of when you got your biggest hug, what did your belly feel like? Warm, calm, and full? Great. Now let's spend a few moments with our eyes closed, practicing feeling warm, calm, and full in the belly. After a few moments of imagining this, Peanut begins to feel it. What else might you feel when you're getting your biggest hug? Protected and safe and soft in my chest? And then Miss Amy asks Peanut to close her eyes and practice that. After a few more minutes, Peanut is breathing deeply and feeling safe. Suddenly, she realizes she is no longer holding the monster story. The too small coat is gone, her necklace and her hat disappear. Confused, she asks what happened. You wrote a new story and practiced it. You were so busy doing that, you couldn't hold on to the scary story. So, Mr. Hippo filed it on a back shelf. How do you feel now? I feel good. I'm not scared. Will you come back tomorrow before bed and retrieve this new story we wrote together today? Yes, I will, but how should I ask for it? Let's give it a name or a favorite color so that when you come back, you can tell Mr. Hippo how to find it for you. Okay, I'll call it Purple Yummy. Miss Amy speaks softly and says, Wonderful, I'll look forward to making your goodie bag for Purple Yummy then. She leans in to give Peanut a kiss on the top of her head, and before you know it, Peanut is fast asleep. 